I'm Fred Brown. I'm on the board of directors for the Picard Collectors Club. Uh, we're in Rock County Historic Society in Janesville, Wisconsin. Presently, there is a Picard China exhibit that's ongoing here. Picard China started in Edgerton, Wisconsin in 1894. Uh, Wilder Picard was the founder and the president of the company. He began his career working for Pauline Pottery, which was based in Edgerton, Wisconsin. The Historical Society has a large collection of the Pauline Pottery that's on permanent display. In 1894, Pauline Pottery was sold and became Edgerton Pottery Company. And there's some recent exhibit items that have been given to the Historical Society by Picard Collector Club members so that you can see them also, which came after Picard started his company in Chicago. From Edgerton, Wisconsin, Picard moved to Chicago, Illinois, where he set up his factory and started hiring fine artisans that came from Europe to decorate porcelain blanks and produce the world's highest quality hand-painted porcelain items that ever been manufactured. The Picard Company is still in existence in Antioch, Illinois, and produces the China for White House, Air Force One, and the embassies, plus other dignitaries throughout the uh, world. Pauline Pottery used clay that was derived in Edgerton. There's a big pit located behind the railroad station in Edgerton where Pauline Pottery got their clay to make their pottery pieces. Picard, when he moved down to Chicago, used blanks. Blanks meaning a piece of china that has been uh, fired but has no decoration on it that they would buy from Europe. The blanks came in by boat normally and would be packed in large crates with sawdust to protect them as they were being shipped. This is examples of some of the earlier pieces that Picard uh, Company produced. Uh, the Jardinier on top is probably the oldest piece that we have at the museum. It was done in 1894 to 1897. It is a paper label. When Picard first started his company to a fixed identity of that, he would cut out from the paper letterhead the symbol of Picard Company trademark and then they would affix it to the bottom of the pieces of, of China. For that to survive over a hundred years makes this type of item fairly rare for the collectors to, to have. There's also at the museum, there's a booklet that's on sale that you can purchase. Picard China, an American tradition, very nice history of Picard China Company. Uh, it's only $5 and that's available here also. You can find in the back there is a whole series of examples of the different trademarks that Picard used throughout their history. There's actually a picture of it, it shows you the dimensions of it, and shows you the period when that mark was used. The first mark, it was 1894 to 1897, and when it was a paper label that came from the stationery from the company. And then the marks go on to Mark II, 1898 to 1903, and the marks then change quite a bit uh, along the way. This is an excellent way to identify China that you can find at antique stores or online exactly during what period they were manufactured. A lot of the pieces are signed by the individual artist and in the book there's a description of who the artists were and when they worked for Picard China in Chicago and in Antioch. When they moved to Antioch, Illinois, there was only about three hand-painted decorating China artisans left in the company. They changed the process because of economics, trying to create more place settings, dinnerware sets so people could buy it, which you can still buy today. And the artisans pretty much have gone away. Another uh, book that's available that was written by Alan Reed in the mid-1990s. That's a very in-depth history of Picard China, plus gives a lot of history and pictures 
of current items that the club know of. A lot of the items that you see here at the museum were all lent to the museum from the Picard China Collectors Club, a group called the Museum Committee. That committee uh, is locally about five members, and those five members came together and made a determination of what items should be displayed here at the Rock County Historical Society. The items were brought in. The museum was very gracious in opening up that museum to the uh, club members. In this cabinet, you'll find a lot of pieces that are actually owned by myself. My mother started collecting Picard China in the late 1980s. She became fascinated with the artistry of it. My mother was an artist herself. She went to art school in California during World War II. She started collecting Picard China. Uh, when she passed, she uh, allowed me to take her items, uh, and I was very pleased to have them. You find in here a lot of nice examples of different blanks from different areas. The top one is a blank. It's uh, a Belique blank, which is very, very lightweight, very translucent. So when you look at, this, at the light showing through it, it actually makes the piece glow. Uh, the white poppies is a very, pop, a very popular pattern by Paul Gasper. Uh, he painted this in 1812 to, eight, I mean, 1912 to 1918. You find down here a Challoner vase. It has a woodland scene on it. Challoner was probably one of the more prolific uh, decorators at Picard China coming in the early 1900s all the way to about 1950. She liked the piece because it was so uh, pictorial of where she grew up in Portland, Oregon, and uh, is an excellent example of the artistry of the China. This is one of the finest pieces and examples of Picard China. Uh, this piece was decorated and painted by Elmer Aldick. Aldick was probably one of the finest China decorators for Picard. He also continued on his life. He moved out to California, and in California he continued to teach and also paint uh, high-end porcelain pieces. This is uh, an example of two tiger pieces that were hand-painted at uh, the Picard Company. Uh, the plaque is a piece that was painted by Campana uh, between 1898 and 1903. The other piece back there is a Bridell piece that was painted during the uh, same period, a little later, 1905, 1910. This is the first time that these two pieces have been together. They are uh, owned by two separate collectors. They're a wonder wonderful example of the artistry uh, of the different decorators at Picard China. We have an advertisement here that was original advertisement for Picard uh, showing the sale of the vase. They would actually produce them on order. Campana left Picard, started his own China decorating company. He also then moved on to uh, providing different design books that people could uh, buy. He also taught in the Chicago area how to uh, decorate uh, porcelain china and he also sold items to decorate with. Down there is some of his examples of his old paints and glazes that he used uh, for decorating china. When the Picard Company moved to Chicago, Illinois, they started almost a commune kind of a situation where all the artisans that worked for Picard China lived together, they worked together, they would go to picnics together. Uh, on, the, on these pictures you can see where there's many gatherings where they would have Christmas parties, uh, birthday parties it's for all the uh, families and the artisans that worked for, for the Picard Company. Uh, mainly the people were all uh, men. There was a few women that worked for Picard uh, throughout the uh, years, but it was really a unity. Everybody worked for Picard for one reason, and that was to produce some of the highest-end Picard china they could possibly do.
This is examples of Picard China during the Century of Progress World's Fair, uh, 1933 to 1934. This process was what they called transfer. They, it was not hand painted. Um, the images were put on pieces of paper, then were transferred into, onto the item and then uh, fired to maintain their permanency. These items during the um, Depression were produced to basically keep Picard in business. Uh, during the World's Fair, these were souvenir items that were literally given out to the people. Uh, some, I believe some of them were sold. One of our members is a great collector of Century of Progress items. You're going to find a lot of other memorabilia here, trays uh, and banners that relate back to the uh, turn of the, of the uh, Century of Progress uh, World's Fair. In this cabinet you find a lot of ephemera pieces, pieces of uh, literature that describes Picard China, also that Picard actually produced. Part of what Picard would do for people that uh, were selling their pieces of China, they produced entertainment books, how to set tableware, uh, how to put the silverware where it belonged, how to, uh, how to do flower arrangement, and actually included recipes in some of the booklets. Uh, also you find is a book that I talked about earlier from about, that was produced by Alan Reed uh, in the mid-1990s, and it's a complete history of Picard China. Uh, you can still find, it. the book is out of print, but it's still available on eBay and uh, different antique malls. Plus you find a lot of the hand decorating designs and also artisan material that was used to paint the uh, China a book also in here by uh, Dorothy Picard Plot, who was the daughter of uh, Wilder Picard. She put together a nice history of her experiences with her parents and the Picard company during that time. During World War II, Picard company had a difficult time staying in business because there was a ration on the amount of fuel and energy that you could use. So Picard being the wonderful businessman he was, he, he got a contract with the United States uh, quartermasters and started producing these wonderful gravy boats. The gravy boats are very robust as far as weight is concerned, but because they were producing these for the war effort, they were able to get uh, credits to fire the kilns and keep the business uh, going. One of our members is the granddaughter of Wilder Picard and in her basement she's been safeguarding a lot of postcards uh, from the Picard company through the uh, early uh, 19s and 20s. Uh, Picard would create a new design and then, send, and then make up postcards and send those postcards out to their distributors to hopefully promote uh, sales. We've been able to uh, have her lend us all of her uh, postcards that, that she could find and then through the efforts of the membership uh, locally and some even more distant, we were able to find examples of all the China pieces that are shown on the postcards. So you can actually see the uh, postcard, it gives the pattern, a description of the pattern and then you can actually see the item. Uh, this is the first time that we've been able to, to uh, produce this. Uh, one of the goals of the club is to try to actually find the exact matching pieces, meaning if it was a picture in the postcard, we're going to try to actually find uh, the uh, picture that would go with that and then take photographs and put them together into a book. As a memorable uh, publication for this exhibit, the Collectors Club produced what they call postcard book that, is, that was given to our members at the reception in November of 2010 that shows all the postcards and hopefully down the road we're going to actually show actual photos of those in, an, in another 
booklet for the uh, membership. The Vicard China Company pioneered etching of China. They would take the uh, porcelain pieces, uh, put a design on them, uh, basically using an asphalt mask uh, that would give a particular uh, pattern. Then they would take the uh, porcelain blank and then put it into a hot acid bath to etch away to reveal the design. There was uh, quite a few different types of designs that was done. They were, their designs were etched into partial pieces or whole pieces. Uh, whole pieces became covered with uh, gold, which became the all over gold patterns. One of the more popular patterns is what they call rose and daisy. There was only one year that Picard actually did glass. You find where they did some etching on glass. The uh, trademark that's put on the glass is a very small gold P. Um, a lot of them were decorated uh, with uh, poppies. Uh, this happens to be a fairly simple glass Picard piece, but it's very rare because there was, there was only a few of them done and they were only done during one year. This is, a, uh, more, this is more postcards, and they're matching items that are shown on the postcards that Picard sent out to announce new patterns. Uh, down on the bottom, you're gonna see a lot of monogram items where people would order uh, a plate, and then Picard would then put the, the initials, the monogram on the people that ordered it. Uh, there is a uh, sample plate that one of our members was able to uh, give to the uh, museum for display that shows a whole bunch of different examples of the Picard monogram designs. Picard Company still takes orders for monograms uh, on plates and it's still one of their more popular items that they sell. Hi, I'm Joel Van Haften. I'm the director here at the Rock County Historical Society. Uh, I know you're enjoying a, a great uh, tour of our Picard China, an American company with Local Roots exhibit. We also wanted to focus in on some of the more uh, recent pieces of Picard China. Uh, and down here, uh, one of our, our last rooms at the uh, Picard exhibit, uh, the Lovejoy Room, we have a lot of modern Picard. Uh, some of this came in directly from uh, Picard China out of Antioch, Illinois. You're gonna see a lovely table display right here with some different, uh, different items of Picard China. Um, also, in a brief moment, we'll do a close-up of, uh, of, of some of the protocol plates that were given out for, for various government offices. You're gonna see a lot of the different ones that might have originated from a, a State Department or from a military uh, department. Um, and you're also gonna be able to see some of the Air Force One China, the Blair House China, and there was a special um, gift set that was given out by Michelle Obama for the G20 summit out of Pittsburgh. This is also on display here. So uh, we've already seen some old Picard China and this is some of the new. So I'll give you an opportunity to get some close-up shots of some of this uh, beautiful China. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, the uh, Picard China exhibit, we do have on display an example of the Air Force One China. And below it, the, it has some, some silver elements and some purple colors. This was the set that was commissioned by Michelle Obama for, uh, it was a gift set given out for the G20 Summit out of Pittsburgh, as I mentioned. And uh, a little bit over, uh, Blair House China, this would be the Vice President's uh, residence. This is an example of the Blair House China. Uh, set out on the table right here uh, is an example of some of Picard's uh, present day uh, items that you can actually purchase from the company. This pattern is called Tiara Royale. Um, it tends to be used for um, wedding gifts and, and other special occasions. This is a, a very uh, kind of high-end uh, porcelain china, so have a look at this.
Also on display at the Rock County Historical Society, uh, we have a variety of different art potteries. Um, believe it or not, Edgerton had apparently uh, very good clay beds and uh, some of the finest clay beds uh, around the entire area. Uh, the, the fact that these existed kind of spurred a lot of different pottery companies into um, producing art pottery. You're going to see a variety of uh, a Pauline pottery in this case right over here. Edgerton Art and Clay Works was also another company of the area and they were producing uh, some of these pipe racks, some of these more classical images. Uh, within the Pauline you're going to see um, a lot of the similar um, effects that were being used by Wilder Austin Picard, a lot of the same gilding and, uh, and ornamentation, but all of this china is, is not porcelain. Uh, Picard was made with porcelain blanks, but this was made directly from clay, so this is pottery. Um, the Norse pottery is also down on the inn, we have a nice collection of that, and um, We've recently obtained on loan some Edgerton PC, which may have been a transition company between the Pauline Company and the Picard Company. So um, this ties in very nicely with our exhibit, our current exhibit uh, on Picard, because it kind of shows you uh, some of the influences that uh, Picard Company actually had uh, prior to uh, establishing his own business. Thanks for stopping by and uh, thanks for watching uh, the entire uh, presentation of our new exhibit here at uh, the Rock County Historical Society. We'd love to have you come on by and take a look at uh, the largest, as far as we know, this is the largest display of Picard China uh, ever put together in, uh, in the entire U.S. Uh, we'd love to have you stop by and take a look at it. We are free and open to the public and we are open currently on weekdays. Uh, from 9 until 4, until the end of the exhibit. Uh, arrangements can be made for large groups on weekends, uh, so we can do uh, weekend visits by appointment, and we'd love to have you stop on by and, take, and check it out.